I'm here with Angela Carr. Hi, Angela. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? It's good to see you. Um, we are going to talk about a poem that appears in this book, Without Ceremony, which is published by Book Hug. And it's a new book. Congratulations on it. And I'm going to ask you to read one poem, a short one called Straight as an Arrow, and then we'll talk about it for just a few minutes. Okay. Um, so I'll start. Straight as an arrow. If I begin to write and cross out the words that desire to take flight, and every phrasal verb that equates civil service with poetry, at the base of the corkwood, an egg's fragmented shell, our last minor birth retrained by the poem. I love this. Um, can you help me understand the first couple of lines? Is it that the speaker, who is a writer, is writing and then crossing out words because they are going to lift off the page and fly off and become transcendent? Or why would those be the words we would cross out? Um, the process that um, is referenced in those lines, that editing process, Right. Is something that the speaker is questioning. And I think that connects to the ethos of the whole collection without ceremony. Yeah. Um, which um, was a kind of a scaffolding that I imagined for myself entering the poems as um, a way of a more direct, more direct or honest or way of. Um, Writing, I don't. I mean, um, maybe honest isn't. Um, no, I like. I like but, honest. Um, yeah. But I mean to to take down the um, the formality of the scaffolding of the poem, mm -hmm. um, and I think that also within there, I was looking at this again today, and the language is referencing back on itself, right? So definitely, the phrasal verb is pointing back to cross out. Um, and mm. then the title, Straight as an Arrow, throughout the book there are arrows. Um, and though the book was constructed, it started as a necrosis on a, um, an image that had arrows in it. And then I started to see arrows everywhere. Mm. And so they, there was a pattern of arrows. Um, but the weird thing about the arrow is that it is usually used to point to something else, something external. Right. But, so it's a strange image to have in the poem because suddenly the attention is being put on the thing that usually points outside, right? Yeah. 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 I, I think of straight as an arrow. Obviously, you're using arrow here in a figurative, idiomatic way, mm -hmm. referring to straight as in modest, cautious, conservative, straight as an arrow or straight as an arrow as direct and not at all digressive or indirect. And yet, Angela, this is twice a meta poem. It's a meta poem at the beginning because it's about the process of writing a poem and in fact, crossing out words that maybe don't long, any longer appear. And then at the end, there's a reminder of the poem. And I think straight as an arrow is not exactly curled in on itself and gnarly and opaque like a meta poem. So help me. <laughs> Is there something paradoxically straight as an arrow about that kind of meta poetic honesty? Like I write a poem and I have to be honest about the way it is made. Does that um, question make sense? Yeah, I think that the title is almost a cliche, right? Yes. And so there's a sense of it operating a little bit ironically that way. On mm -hmm. the one hand, it's a it, it's a cliche, so um, we accept it as it is. But then, when you start to think about what what it might mean, um, there's a little question mark implied in that. Yeah. Um, like whether that's actually possible. Yeah. There, yeah. the straight as an hour reminds me of a naive, uh, mimetic or realistic language theory like i have a word and it goes straight to the thing you know like you say a word like civil service 
and then boing, the, the, the word gets right to it or something like that. And this poem obviously doesn't follow such a language theory. So how do you help us with the last line of the first stanza, which is maybe hilariously and ironically an equation of civil service and poetry? <laughs> help us with that. Um. Yeah, I mean, normally if civil service is associated with bureaucracy, one would think right. of it as the opposite of poetry. Yeah. Um, but if one is going to be informal in their poetics, then all of the language should be allowed to enter. So mm -hmm. I sort of a reflection on um, those oppositions. Mm. The civil service... Um, yeah, it's particularly strange one. <laughs> and it gets <laughs> happily stranger the last, the second stanza is almost an instance of what poetry can do if you have a certain attitude toward it. Can you help us with the minor birth? Is the minor birth a little poem like this? Um, the minor birth is the minor the minor beginning, um, which I suppose is not a poem because it's being trained by the poem. Mm. Oh, well, okay. Maybe it's a poem that's not a proper poem um, or um, something of everyday life or something ordinary that mm. is minor or small, yeah. but um, not the stuff of the poem i'm not sure yeah and what has emerged if not a little poem like this what has emerged from the the, the shells obviously eggs or at least to me obviously eggs fragmented shell is what's left after something has emerged so i uh, help and me it, with <laughs> that's really the only image in the poem too this corkwood tree and the broken yeah. egg at the bottom yeah. of the tree but there's really no association between the tree and the egg. Though so one sees them, at least I do, I see them together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how could, this is obviously a rhetorical question, how could anything that occurs in a poem of eight lines be retrained by the poem in the last line? Yeah, it's a good question. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> you chose this poem of eight lines, the yeah. short poem. And then I thought, well, it's interesting in the sense that it points out to all the other poems in the book in a way that is more open in some ways than some of the others might be mm. um, because it's um, it's so elusive and because it's a poem about writing. Mm. Um, yeah. So there's a bit of an argument, I think, with poetry or with what it means to write the, po the poem. Yeah. Can um, we spell out that argument? What What is at stake in the argument? What are the positions and counter positions? Well, I suppose it connects to that, um, you know, our, our usual argument against closure, um, you know, to write the poem and to have a title would seem to imply that that the poem should be a, a tidy box, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Yeah. And this poem visually wants to be a tidy box. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny when I started to think about arrows and um, I started to see them everywhere. And then there was actually, there was a show this Ava Haas show called Boxes and Arrows, I believe it was called. Oh, nice. And yeah. You happen to have a prop she for that? Through a, she, right there through a the she was drawing arrows everywhere. Boxes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you would be willing, we didn't prepare this, and you have a copy of the book in front of you. Yeah. I wondered if you would pick um, maybe blue arrows. Okay. Um, and read it. And I, we won't have time really to talk much about it, but I think it might be edifying for people to hear another one of the arrow poems. Okay. 
Okay. She cannot say no if the consequence would be to remove a brick from the building in view of both, but housing neither. They make no effort to change. It was a friendship of convenience and repetition, lights flashing at an intersection are meant to slow traffic, not halt it altogether. She knows such deep reverence for the moment when truly nothing is happening. All dollars are spent to stop time in this way. I'm pretty sure the P of inspection invites doodles and marginalia. We spread an army surplus blanket against the skyline. She cannot distinguish what type of machinery shimmers and groans in the near moonlight where the future is submerged in pounding tides. Speaking of bridges, these will also survive us. That's marvelous. Angela Carr, thank you so much for talking with us about, well, two poems. The book is Without Ceremony. It's published by Book Hug. And it's really just out as if this as of this recording by a few weeks, it sounds like, yeah? Yeah. Congratulations and thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Al. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.